Hi everyone, I'm Bruno Finkel, and today we start an exciting challenge. We develop a sports car together using VI Car Real Time to create, simulate, and refine its design in a manner you can follow along and learn how to use this amazing tool, even if this is the first time you're interacting with it. Throughout this series, we'll develop many aspects of this car. In our first episode, we will use an existing model and we'll create a track-focused version of it. This allows us to cover all of the model parameters, how to input them, and then how to keep everything clean and organized. Before we start our project, let's briefly talk about some interesting aspects of car real time. It is a software suite designed for real-time vehicle dynamic simulations. Because of that, it allows for quick experimentation of large amounts of data. Let me give you an example. We can set up a test session where dozens or hundreds of lane change maneuvers will be run for different springs, entry bars, and damper settings. We can then map the car's behavior and find the sweet spot for each of these parameters. Not only that, we can also run many other advanced analysis in a very efficient way, including, for example, modeling active systems of a car. In terms of receiving model inputs, it also uses very efficient strategies. It is a curve-based model, which means that it works by representing suspension kinematics, compliances, and many other systems through lookup tables. This approach is both powerful and simple, because you can represent any car as long as you can measure these curves. The use of lookup tables not only makes it easier for us to model our car, but it also allows for a very precise and fast-running model of very complex systems. Now, it's time we start our sports car project. You can follow this tutorial along to end up with the same model that we will create, or you can use everything that you will learn here to model your own vehicle. Before we work on our sports car, let's make sure our environment is set up properly. Our first task is to define where our files for the project will be stored. To do this, head to the main menu on the very top of the screen and open Edit and Preference. In the General tab of the Preference Editor, you need to select a path for the working directory, where the project files will be stored, where all VRK real-time output files will be saved as well. You can create more working directories for other projects, and you can even use files from different directories in the same car model, but having everything organized within their own directories will be very helpful for when editing data in the files themselves and for sharing projects with your colleagues. Once we select a path, we can click on Apply to save our selection. We'll also create a database, which is a folder structure that will hold the model files in this working directory that we select. You can have multiple databases within the same working directory to keep files from different models you'll be working with. On the Utilities tab from the main menu, we can select Database Utilities. In the Create New Database tab, we can navigate to the working directory we just created, open it, and add a name to this project's database file within that working directory. Make sure to use simple characters, no spaces, and end the name with .cdb. Now we can go ahead, click Create Database, and close the prompt. Now we have all set to start working on the vehicle model itself. For this episode, we'll start with a vehicle model already available in car real time, the sports car, which we consider to be a road legal vehicle, and our main goal is to create a track version out of it. This process will take us through all kinds of data available in car real time, and we'll discuss how to read and edit each of these inputs as we create this updated version. You can use these learnings to build your own models as well. All of the car modeling is done in build mode which can be accessed by clicking the hammer icon on the toolbar right below the main menu there are multiple ways to start creating a car model car real time offers a streamlined method to import models from adam's car for example it's also possible to start from scratch by using the vehicle wizard in case your data comes from the car's design data and the knc wizard which is a good option for data coming from knc kinematics and compliances measured data among other options in our case since we're creating a new version of an existing model, we will load our base model and then clone it. To do this, we right-click somewhere empty on the tree view, 
and select Load Model. We'll see a list of registered databases on the left side and their content on the right side. We can go to the Sport Car database and select the sportcar.xml file. The Sport Car project will now show up in the tree view. In order to keep the base model unchanged, we right-click the Sport Car root folder and select Clone Model. A prompt will show up where we'll name the cloned model and select the database we previously created to store it. Let's keep everything clean and organized. We will call it track car. Now our cloned model shows in the tree view as well. We don't need the template sport car model to show in the tree view anymore and we'll remove it from there. Doing this will not delete the model from your files. It will just take that away from the tree view to avoid any confusion. You will also notice that our cloned model is highlighted with bold letters. This means the changes made to it in car real time are not saved yet. We have to select the model's root in the tree view and click Save All on the top right to save all changes made to the model to its files in the database. With this, we just created a new vehicle in car real time and we can start turning it into a track car. Before we start changing the vehicle parameters, we should take a look at how the model inputs are structured so that we have a better idea of how to deal with them. Under the car's root folder in the tree view, you can find a list of all of its subsystems. If we have the root folder selected, we see that the subsystems are also listed on the main screen. Each subsystem contains all of the information and files to fully define its behavior. Rear suspension subsystems, for example, hold kinematics, spring, damping, and their compliance data. You can have multiple suspension subsystems available for each vehicle, which can be accessed by browsing files here. When we click on a car system in the tree view, the main screen will show tabs containing all the inputs for that system. When we go to a specific tab, we will see the specific inputs and data formats available or required. Some complex components may refer to property files to define their behavior. You can edit those with text editors. Mostly property files hold lookup tables that represent these components. You can easily apply a scale factor to amplify or decrease the effect of that property file. For example, we can test the effects of a harder spring by setting a scale factor higher than 1. Some parameters can also be defined in different ways that can be chosen according to what's more practical for you in each of your projects. Other parameters can be set as constants, like this one, and for most of them, clicking the field will display its units on the bottom of the screen. Finally, some parameters that are defined as simple tables can be added within car real time itself, like the compression ratio curve that indicates how much this spring will compress with relation to the wheel jounce or travel. Now, let's speak about the suspension system, which is a very important one as a whole. They can be represented in different ways, either as the curve-based model we have here, where we can directly manipulate the property files that contain tables with the kinematics and compliance parameters, or in a way that's called template-based suspension, which allows for the representation of many different kinds of suspension mechanisms by defining hardpoint coordinates, and the compliance properties for each of those points, representing, for example, the bushings. There is also a very useful tool called VI Suspension Gen for creating these types of template based from scratch, and when ready, they can be exported as curve-based models ready to be loaded in car real time. We'll not redesign suspension kinematics in this video, but you can find a lot more information about suspension gen at its own help file. One last important thing to mention before we begin editing the car are the reference systems used in car real time. There's a global reference system that regulates the relative positions of everything in the simulation. There are local reference systems for each wheel and suspension, and the one that we should keep in mind for now is the vehicle reference system S0. It's located in the middle of the front track at height 0, with X pointing forward, Y pointing 
to the left and Z pointing upward. Now that we know what kind of data we'll be dealing with, let's use what we learned to start turning our sports car into a track car. Some of the main handling parameters for any vehicle are its masses and their location. We'll start with the sprung mass on the body subsystem in the sprung mass tab. In order to reduce the mass of the car, we removed many items of the interior of the vehicle and we were able to bring the weight down to 1150 kilos. We were also able to move the center of the mass closer to the middle of the wheelbase at 1450 millimeters and make the weight laterally symmetrical with an 80 kilogram driver. The CG height got actually a little higher after the changes at 490 millimeters from the ground. The suspended mass polar inertias were also affected and you can copy their new values. Notice that the top section of this page allows for defining chassis compliance data, but they are deactivated by default, meaning that for now, the chassis will behave as if it's perfectly rigid. Now, let's add our driver mass properties by visiting this tab. We activate it by checking the box and we're adding an 80 kilogram driver at these coordinates with relation to the vehicle reference system. We also replaced wheels and brakes to make them 4 kilos lighter. And we can update all of those numbers on the tab front, wheel and tires. And we do the same for the rear. Now that we have the masses sorted out, let's work on our car's suspension. While we are not changing the car's kinematics, we will be preparing the car for the more aggressive driving at the track and increased load transfer and downforce. Having fast load transfer and controlled chassis movement will become key for the track version. To update that, let's head over to the front suspension subsystem and select the springs tab. We defined that the suspension stiffness should be 30% higher and we will change the scale factor to 1.3. Since we changed the scale factor, we did not need to modify directly the components property file at this moment. Now, we'll go into the damper tab to do the same using its scale factor and we will repeat the process for the rear suspension subsystem. While our initial sports car was originally meant for road use, for our track version we can certainly extract more performance by adjusting static camber and tow. We'll make some initial estimates for now based on our experience and we'll leave the fine tuning for our future track test. First, let's head over to the front suspension subsystem and look for the suspension setup data tab. There, open the wheel angles tab. The angles defined here will be the final wheel orientation when the suspension is at its design condition. It makes it easy for us to understand the influence of different angles without necessarily changing the whole geometry. And checking the box beside each data disables the adjustment and leaves the angle at the design condition defined when we created the suspension. For toe angle, we will go with minus one degree. A negative number, according to the convention system displayed, indicates toe out. And for camber, we'll go with minus 2.7 degrees, with the top of the tire tilted toward the car. Now, let's do the same for the rear suspension and set it at positive 0.25 degrees, meaning toe in, and minus 2.2 degrees of camber. Our last update for this episode will be tires with more grip. We'll click on the front wheel and tire subsystem once again. Tire models are complex items and are defined within their own property files that can be analyzed by clicking this icon. We have a race tire model available that we can install on our car. We can browse for it by opening the file dialog. We we'll look for the race car database and select the front tire .tir file. Let's now do the same for the rear tires. These are all the changes we'll make for now. Notice how the car subsystems are highlighted with bold letters in the tree viewer, indicating that the changes are not yet saved. 
To save them, select the model's root in the tree viewer and click Save All. It's time we run a simulation to validate the changes made to the vehicle. Simulations are configured in test mode. We'll be looking deeper into test mode in the next episodes, but for now, you can follow along as we quickly set up a test. We'll right-click somewhere empty in the tree viewer and we'll select New Fingerprint. Fingerprints are the folder-like structures that can be used to group a set of events. With the fingerprint selected, we can hover over the event bookshelf, find the constant radius cornering event and double-click it. And we will select the track car. This is a test where the car will be driven around a constant radius path on a flat surface slowly increasing its speed, allowing us to characterize the vehicle balance. We'll set the final velocity parameter to 150 kph. This is the final target speed for this test, one that we know is high for this car at this radius and it will show its limit behavior. This is already a working test simulation setup and we can use it to validate if our track car is working fine. Still, we will use this opportunity to also see how it compares to the baseline model by testing it too. To do that, we'll right-click the event in the fingerprint and select Copy Selected Event. With this copied event selected, we'll browse for another model. We'll find the Sports Car Database, select it and choose the SportCar.xml file. We can click the Name field on the top and change it so that it refers to this vehicle. We'll then select the fingerprint once more, click to save them, and then we'll hit the play icon to run the tests. The prompt on the bottom right will display information about what's going on with the simulations. When it says both simulations are completed, we can finally animate them and observe how our updated car compares to the original one. We'll go to Review Mode on the toolbar and our simulation results are displayed on the tree view on the left. We can select both using Ctrl, Select, Shift, Select or just dragging them. We'll click on the camera icon to bring up VI Animator with both simulations overlap. If we hit the play button, we can watch both cars going through the test event. On the left of the screen, you can check which color represents each car. Notice how the standard model understeers and goes wide much earlier than the track car. A good indicator that our modifications already made the track car faster by increasing its maximum lateral acceleration potential by a lot, which is our goal with a track car. Also, the fact that it was able to perform the test validates that our new model has no issues on the inputs and it's working fine. Now that we validated the initial changes, we can close the animation screen in the main menu, expand file and click on save session as. We'll select the working directory, name the session track car tutorial session and save. This will save the current session, including all models available on the tree view and our fingerprints so that we can carry on from here in the future. A good practice is to always validate the model after every big change by running a simulation with it. If the simulation is not successful, you can investigate the simulator prompt for clues on what could have caused the problem and refer to the help file to investigate how to solve it. I've just shown you examples on some of the main different ways data is used and how to edit them. As we'll see in the upcoming videos of the series, models and simulations can get more complex and if you need more information about some functions or parameters, you can always refer to the help file for more information. In this tutorial, we explained what VI car real time is and we studied the general structure for assembling a vehicle. With this information, we could move on to our main goal, creating an early version of our track car model. We did this by cloning the sports car example that come with the software and editing a selection of data that represent the main changes we could do as we start tuning the new car. In the second video of the series, we'll focus on running simulations, analyzing the results 
in designing or developing better cars with that. All with the help of VI Car Real Time. And there's a whole lot more coming up in future episodes. I'll talk to you soon.